the production of semiconductors is starting out on so-called wafers. Wafers are categorized by their size, typically an inch, six inch, nine inch, also 12 inch. The tendency is going towards bigger and bigger wafers. But the bigger the wafer is, the harder it is to handle the tolerances on each of the spots around the whole wafer. Wafers are typically round. The substrate the wafers are starting with is either P-doped or N-doped. In the vast majority of semiconductor processes, we are working with P-doped substrates. That means there are more free holes than electrons. The reason for that is that the electrons are three times faster to move around in the material. And if we start with the P-doped material, we can build N-channel MOSFETs there, where the charges that build up the channel are the electrons, which are the faster ones. The thickness of the substrate is typically somewhere in the few hundred micrometer to few millimeter range. Instead of micrometers, the semiconductor industry is often using the term microns. There are typically several hundred steps involved to build the transistors. Here I'm just showing you a very simplified version of what is happening. After we started out with the peat substrate, we are adding the so-called N-wells or N plus wells, or even N plus plus wells, which says something about how many electrons there are freely available within those wells. For our final transistors, those are going to be the sources and the drains, while the substrate is the so-called bulk connection, which is normally shorted directly to the source and is not routed to the outside. The next significant step in the process is growing the so-called gate oxide. The thickness of the gate oxide, here drawn as a very thin sheet, is the one that is determining the name of several semiconductor processes. So if we're speaking about a 0.35 micron process, that means that this layer has a thickness of 350 nanometers. For power MOSFET applications, one micrometer down to 350 nanometers is a typical range for MOSFETs in the several hundred volts range. In digital processes where the voltages from drain to source are way smaller, the thicknesses currently are somewhere in the few dozen nanometer range, like a 17 nanometer process would be a typically one for building microprocessors in. Currently, the smallest commercially available processes are 3 nanometers, and the first applications that are typically using the latest and greatest processes are the memory applications, so the memory for our computers, for our cell phones. As those circuits only contain transistors and capacitors, and later on the processes are getting adapted for CPUs, GPUs, computational processing units, graphic processing units, and then they grow into other applications from there. The last connection we need to add to complete our MOSFET is the gate. The gate is built by a so-called poly on top there, and while it originally was built out of metal, that is where the name metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor is coming from. Nowadays, this is another layer of semiconductor material that is just heavily doped, so it actually gets a conductor and not a semiconductor. The colors red and green that I'm using on the slide here are a very typical representation of what integrated circuit designers or IC designers see from the top view when they are looking into their CAT systems, CAT stands for Computer Added Design Systems, and very often the gates are red and the heavily end-doped regions are green. Now as the gate 
is having a surface right above the welds here and there. There is actually two surfaces on top of each other. So a gate to source surface and also a gate to drain surface. And these surfaces are constructing the parasitic capacitors that show up as the dominating pole in our operational amplifier circuit.